In this video, we will look at the different types of helicopters and their pros and cons. Let's get started. The single main rotor is the most common configuration. 95% of all helicopters currently flying are of this category. The rotor is located at the center of gravity. This type is desirable because of its relative simplicity compared to other types. The application of power to the single main rotor will cause a strong torque that must be countered in some way. We will discuss these methods later in the video. The large diameter of the single rotor is a problem for high-speed flight because it causes the advancing tip to have a higher relative velocity and will reach Mach effect sooner. Contrarotating coaxial rotors. This type has one rotor positioned above the other on a concentric shaft. This automatically balances the torque reaction on the airframe and does not require additional methods to balance the torque as in the previous configuration. Another advantage is the compact footprint of the coaxial concept. The mast is the vertical post on which the rotor is mounted. For this type, the mast needs to be tall enough to provide ample separation between the two rotors. This adds weight and drag. This also adds mechanical complexity. The pilot's control inputs must somehow be passed through the plane of the lower rotor to reach the upper rotor, which is rotating in the opposite direction. Moreover, for a military helicopter, all this adds to the vulnerable area. To make the mechanism simpler, the intermeshing rotor configuration was developed. The intermeshing design features outward tilted, contrarotating shafts with intersecting rotor disc planes, as seen on the Kaman K Max. The two rotors are driven by a single gearbox that ensures that the rotors do not hit each other. Like the coaxial, the intermeshing design offers a smaller overall footprint, which is beneficial for flight operations from confined locations. The tandem helicopter is used to provide a wide center of gravity range for a cargo helicopter. This type has the problem of interference effects between the two rotors that reduces efficiency. The side-by-side -side helicopter configuration is used for larger helicopters such as the Russian Mil V-12. This arrangement has extra structural weight because of the tip-mounted rotors. This type avoids the interference problems of the tandem helicopter and may benefit in forward flight from an apparent doubling of the aspect ratio. The quadcopter type was impractical for gas-powered engines, but it is well suited for electric motors. This type typically has four fixed-pitch propellers attached to electric motors. By varying the speed of the propellers, pitch, roll, and yaw control can be achieved. Effective control requires rapidly changing the thrust of the propellers. However, as the quadcopter becomes larger in size, the motors and propellers also become bigger, and they have more rotational inertia. This means there is a larger lag time between pilot input and change in thrust. To solve this issue, multicopter designs may be used. They have a large number of smaller motors and propellers spread all around the vehicle, with careful summation of thrusts and torques used to control the vehicle. A multitude of small motors provides better controllability than a few large motors. The alternative is to use variable pitch propellers, but that adds complexity, weight, and cost. A compound helicopter adds wings and separate propulsion to a conventional rotor system in order to fly faster and more efficiently than a standard helicopter while retaining vertical takeoff and landing. It can have fixed wings to carry part of the lift in forward flight, or an auxiliary propulsion system to provide thrust instead of relying solely on the rotor, or both. By letting the wings take more lift and auxiliary propulsors provide thrust, the rotor can be slowed or offloaded. The Airbus Racer is a demonstrator designed to cruise around 400 km per hour using a main rotor, box wing configuration, and lateral pusher propellers to combine speed, range, and lower fuel burn. The disadvantages of this type are added weight and the problem that the wing directly below the main rotor is pushed downwards during hovering. This is why the wings are kept as small as possible. Before we move on, if you enjoy these types of aircraft design videos, you can support me via my Buy Me A Coffee page. Your support helps me keep creating videos like these. Thank you for your support. Now let's look at the different anti-torque devices. As discussed, for a single main rotor, some kind of anti-torque device is required to balance the torque from the main rotor. For most helicopters this is provided by a tail rotor, which is driven by a shaft link to the main rotor. The pilot's rudder pedals control the tail rotor's blade pitch, causing the yaw to change. The tail rotor is a significant source of noise and adds drag in forward flight. One clever way of using the tail rotor is installing it at an angle so as to get some lift. The canted tail rotor can be seen on the Sikorsky H-60 Blackhawk. Shrouding the tail rotor adds safety, as people on the ground won't accidentally walk into it. A shroud also reduces noise and radar cross-section. A conventional tail rotor seldom has more than four blades, a typical fenestrin includes 8 to 13 blades. 
Compared to conventional tail rotor blades, the fenestrin blades are also much smaller and spin at higher speeds. The primary advantage of this duct fan arrangement is to reduce the turbulence and vortex shedding that occurs on rotor and propeller blades. In so doing, the rotor becomes more aerodynamically efficient by reducing drag, and noise as well as vibration are also significantly reduced. The fenestrin offers safety advantages too since the shroud helps protect the rotor from striking outside objects. Tail rotor strikes against trees, power lines, and other obstructions are one of the most common causes of helicopter crashes, so reducing the rotor's vulnerability to damage is important. The shroud also reduces the danger tail rotors have traditionally posed to ground crew operating near helicopters during takeoff and landing. However, the shroud adds weight that offsets at least some of the improvements in performance. A lateral thruster is an alternative to the tail rotor. It is a duct fan inside the aft fuselage. While inefficient for hover, it can offer drag advantages in high-speed flight. A compound helicopter like the Airbus Racer does not need a tail rotor, as it can use differential thrust from the two additional propellers to counteract the main rotor torque. Another interesting type is the Noter, short for no tail rotor. A variable pitch fan inside the tail boom draws air in and pumps it down the boom, creating a high-volume, low-pressure airflow. This air exits through coanda slots along the side of the tail boom. Now, the downwash from the main helicopter rotor interacts with this airflow and produces a sideways lift force. To make this sideways force more controllable, the rest of the air is pushed out of a slot at the end of the tail boom. This direct jet thruster at the end of the boom plus vertical fins are used to fine-tune yaw and directional stability. The advantage of this system is more safety and reduced noise as well as reduced drag in cruise. But it consumes more power and is heavier than a conventional tail rotor. These were some of the types of helicopters and their pros and cons. If you are interested in other VTOL types like the tilt rotor, tilt wing, tail sitter, etc., their design features and how they work are discussed in this video here. If you found the video informative, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.